parade of champions, Anita from Cass counts eight losses, Anita High School. Ankeny from Polk County, coached by Max Akers, 24 victories, one loss, Ankeny High School. Galva from Ida County, coached by Albert Hensler, 23 victories, four losses, Galva High School. Gilbert from Story County, coached by Ralph Cosbo, 21 wins, five losses, Gilbert consolidated. Grand River from Decatur County, coached by Howard B. Pemmont, 24 wins, three losses, Grand River High School. Hartley from O'Brien County, coached by Gilbert J. Christensen, 23 wins, five losses, Hartley High School. And here's Hubbard from Hardin County, coached by Craig Downing, 22 victories, two losses, Hubbard High School. Lost Nation from Clinton County, coached by R.E. Staples, 17 wins, eight losses, Lost Nation High School. Oakland from Pottawatomie County, coached by O.E. Lester, 26 wins, one loss, Oakland High School. Renwick from Humboldt County, coached by Darwin Stover, 20 wins, three losses, Renwick High School. Richland from Keokuk County, coached by John King, 20 victories, five losses, Richland High School. Seymour from Wayne County, coached by Earl Oberg, 26 wins, one loss, Seymour High School, the parade of champions. Doyle Carpenter, director of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union for Northwest District, presents the 1953 free throw champion, Judy Brower, 17-year-old senior from Dune High School. She scored 23 out of 25 in the state meet to win over 31 other competitors. Judy Brower, 53 champ. And now final seconds in the consolation round game of this 53 tournament between Franklin Consolidated and Kinross, with Franklin Consolidated winning third place in the state meet by defeating Kinross 54 to 49. Franklin Consolidated from Latimer Coulter in Franklin County, coached by Earl L. Opheim. And there they are, the third players in the state meet. Kinross from Keokuk County, coached by John Bauslog, the fourth place winners in the 53 tournament. And now game captains receive final instructions from officials Harlan Rigby of Greenfield and Leroy Dick of Atlantic. Starting lineups introduced to the crowd, New Sharon coached by Ed Chris, Garnavillo coached by L.E. Daly, Jr. And now play begins in this, the game of games, the 1953 championship game. Well, New Sharon was off to a flying start. Very first shot was a basket by Shirley Klinsman, the All-Stater from New Sharon. And that's the way the ball game started out, and that's the way it went throughout the entire game. Basket for basket, New Sharon leading in the opening seconds, and got off to a four to nothing lead. Then the girls from Garnavilla came back, and after a minute and a half to play, it was tied up. Six to six, that's the way the game went, and the game was tied up six different times throughout play before Garnavillo finally forged ahead to lead and win the great ball game. Well, in this first quarter, let's check the starting lineups for you. For New Sharon, forwards number 42, All-State senior Shirley Klinsman. Number 23, senior Eileen Fox. Number 20, senior Pat Eltz. Guards for New Sharon starting the big ball game. Number 40, senior Louise DeWitt. Number 22, a junior, Maxine Lausma. Number 34, a sophomore, Nancy Burgraff. Now the starting lineup for Garnavillo at forward, number 45, the All-State sophomore, Sandra Feet. Number 22, a junior, Sandra Eberhard. Number 23, freshman, Gene Overbeck. Also to see plenty of action in the championship game at forward for Garnavillo, number 25, sophomore, Audrey Teasy. Guards for Garnavillo, number 55, junior, K. Overbeck. Number 33, junior, Sue Bird. And number 35, a sophomore, Joanne Meyer. Garnavillo, one of the youngest teams ever to capture a state tournament title, with no seniors on the team, and the starting lineup including three juniors, two sophomores, 
and a freshman. Well, let's watch the action now as this first quarter progresses. With five and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter, Garnavillo fought back, tie the ball game up again. And New Sharon forged ahead once again, but uh, after many more uh, hectic moments of play, it was tied up nine to nine. And with only seconds remaining in the first quarter, well, it was all tied up 13 apiece. And then things happened as far as Garnavillo was concerned. Sandra Feet with the ball came in and scored rapid field goals, a pair of them, to give the Garnavillo team the edge in the first quarter. Record crowd saw this ball game. As a matter of fact, a record tournament was recorded from all standpoints of attendance. 50,000 people witnessed the 1953 Girls State Tournament throughout all sessions, and all sessions were a sellout. Sandra Feet with the ball and a basket. Number 45, great performer, all state, just a sophomore. We'll hear from her in future years. Now New Sharon with the ball and the guards fighting. There it is, 17 to 13, Garnavillo 17, New Sharon 13 at the end of the first period. Now the second quarter of the state tournament game. We said the crowd was, of course, the greatest. Attendance, nearly 50,000 for the entire tournament. The games were heard and seen by untold thousands through the most extensive radio, newspaper, and television coverage in the history of the meet. In the second quarter of play, New Sharon and Garnavillo exchanged baskets back and forth, back and forth. New Sharon gradually cutting the Garnavillo lead until midway in the quarter, the New Sharon team on two quick baskets by Eileen Fox, and there's one of them, tied the ball game up 27 to 27. We'll watch the play now. Garnavillo working the ball back and forth. New Sharon advanced to the championship game of this 53 tournament by defeating Grand River in the first round, Galva in the quarterfinal round, and Kinross in the semifinal round. Garnavillo advanced to the finals by eliminating Hartley in the first round, Seymour in the quarterfinal round, and Franklin consolidated in the semifinal round. Shirley Klinsman driving in. Number 42, very much in evidence in every tournament game. Now we'll watch Garnavillo with the ball. And that whip pass into Sandra Feet. Feeds out occasionally. Many, many times would drive in for that basket, getting a great percentage of her shots. Here's New Sharon in the forward court. Number 23 is Eileen Fox. Shirley Klinsman throws a pass out to Pat Elts, number 20, scoring. A long one. Still in the second quarter of play, in the closing minutes of this second quarter now. Sandra Feet always paying off in the last seconds of each period. There's a basket by Sandra Feet. In the closing seconds of the second period of play in the championship game. Good work by the Garnavillo guards. Always in there. Retrieving the ball. Now in the ball game, you may have noticed number 25 is Audrey Teasy in the ball game along with Gene Overbeck and Sandra Feet at forwards for Garnavillo. DC number 25, over back, in the feet. Tipped out of bounds, and now with the ball, New Sharon trying to score a few buckets, and the halftime ends, however, before they could do it. And Garnavillo protecting that lead. Garnavillo 39, New Sharon 35 at the end of the first half of play. During the halftime intermission, lifetime tournament passes are presented to the originators of the Girls Athletic Union, John Agins, C.W. Sankey, and a posthumous award to Mr. M. M. McIntyre. Now we start the third quarter of play with the score, Garnavillo 39, New Sharon 35. Although this was one of the highest scoring championship games, great defensive work was contributed by both guard combinations. Maxine Lausma, Nancy DeWitt, Elaine Mitchell, and also in the ball game, Kay Quillen and Alice Hall and Lois Herman for New Sharon, all in the backcourt. Holding guard assignments for Garnavillo and turning in great performances in the second half. Kay Overbeck, Joanne Meyer, Sue Bird, and Margie Kynes. There's evidences of good guard work there. Play continues in this torrid third quarter of the championship game. The Garnavillo Gohawks kept fighting off each New Sharon challenge and held on to the lead throughout the entire period. 
Never by more than five points, however. At one time, early in this period, it was Garnavillo, 43, New Sharon, 42. The third period of play. We see New Sharon with the ball. That's Klinsman, of course, passing in. Now working the ball in by Lean Fox, who misses a shot. Notice the good work of the Garnavillo guards, always in there fighting. This is the big game. The championship ball game. Over 700 schools began participating in sectional plays. 86 sectionals this year instead of the usual 64. And advancing to district play. Attendance at all tournaments breaking records again this year. Now in this third period, a bit of the nervousness and the tenseness being shown with a few bad passes. Now working the ball, Sandra Feet driving in and scoring. On either side of the basket, pouring them in, in the third period of play. At one time, in this third period, it was Garnavillo 50, New Sharon 49, but always fighting, never able to take over that lead, the New Sharon girls. Beautiful drive-in shot by Eileen Fox, number 23. Now let's watch the girls from Garnavillo with the ball. That's Teasy and Overbeck. Teasy and Overbeck. Teasy dribbling around, gonna hook one in to Sandra Feet. Leading back. Good passing combination. Always watching for that basket. Good defensive work by New Sharon guards. Watch them. Making it tough for that basket in this third period. Third period drawing to close now in a very close ball game. Sandra missed that and tries it another way and hits. Sandra Feet scoring for Garnavillo. Over the head of the guards. And now on the forward court for New Sharon. Klinsman blocking for a shot. Pass in to Fox and a basket. Beautiful hook shot. There it is, the third period. Garnavillo 54, New Sharon 51. And so with a precious three points separating the teams and only eight short minutes remaining to play, the fourth quarter begins. Throughout this championship game and the entire tournament, officiating was at its best. Good sportsmanship in evidence always, and this year's field of contenders, one of the best ever. The smallest team in the state tournament this year was Tiny Kinross from Keokuk County, with only 44 in the high school and the town's population only 105. Largest school in the tournament this year was Hartley, a town of 1,700 with 215 enrolled in the high school. Now during this fourth quarter, in the very opening seconds of the fourth quarter, let's watch beautiful stalling technique employed by the Garnavillo team. Number 25, Audrey Teasy and Gene Overbeck, number 23, working it back and forth with Sandra Feet, of course, in the pivot uh, spot. Taking their time, waiting for the perfect shot. They were in the lead, three points, 54 to 51. They can take their time now. This is in the very opening phase of the fourth period. See them back and forth. That's Teasy now, Overbeck, taking her time, no pass, waiting for the perfect shot. Will they get that shot? Let's watch and see. They're wanting to put the ball in, of course, to Sandra Feet. Will they get that perfect shot? There's the pass, the fake, the shot is good. A basket, 56 to 51. That's the way it started in the fourth period and gave the Garnavillo team the advantage they needed and they put on brilliant stalling techniques throughout the entire fourth quarter. However, not to be denied, New Sharon always fighting back and never out of the ball game. Getting a few of the jitters in the fourth quarter. It's always can happen in the great tournament games. Now here we see Garnavillo again. Always using up the precious time. Sandra Feet moving out now. There's the stall. Waiting it out. Trying to bring those guards out. The whip pass in. No shot. Stalling. Always stalling. And this was early in the fourth period of play. Sandra Feet dribbling. Taking it easy. Over back number 23, of course, the ball. Sandra again dribbling. Taking their time always. They lost that one, however, and in another sequence of action. Basket by Eileen Fox, number 23, for New Sharon. Every time New Sharon would get the ball, they'd try to score desperately now. As play continued in the hectic fourth quarter. And never out of the ball game, New Sharon. Only a few points separating the teams, yet Garnavillo putting on a cool stall, deliberately. And to stall the ball game out. Over back, and there's a pass to the back court. Tipped out of bounds, however. Garnavillo take it. 
That's Sandra Feet with the ball, number 45. Playing out now, she's out of the pivot position for the stall. Audrey Teasy, number 25, dribbling. Foul called, another point made. Every point, a vital point, now in the fourth period. New Sharon's All-State, Shirley Klinsman, put on a great rally all by herself in that fourth period. Tried desperately to save the game. Along with a brilliant play by the other forwards, of course. But they couldn't do it, because every time the ball was off the boards, it was the Garneville guards trying to retrieve that ball. Here's a basket by Shirley Klinsman. Klinsman, Fox, and Pat Eltz, number 20. Forward combination. Now, we approach the final seconds of the fourth period. Coach is giving their teams the final words. Garnavilla was not to be denied, however. And strangely enough, in the last minutes of the game, Sandra Feet didn't score a point. Audrey Teasy and Gene Overbeck began hitting and completely upset the New Sharon defense that meant victory. And there it is, Garnavilla 67, New Sharon 60. The new champions, the champions of 1953, a valiant ball team, a great club, one of the youngest teams ever to win a championship. Garnavillo, receiving the cheers of the crowd and congratulations from their opponents. Now the presentation of the awards. Awards being presented by John King, president of the board of directors of the Girls High School Athletic Union, and director for Southeast Iowa. Mr. King presents the 1953 fourth place team, Tiny Kinross, smallest team in the tournament, coached by John Boslog. Kinross receiving their awards. And there they are, beautiful trophy. Now the 1953 third place team, Franklin Consolidated from Latimer Coulter, coached by Earl L. Opheim. There they are now, receiving their awards. The 1953 third place team, Franklin Consolidated. And now the number two team, the runner up in the 1953 tournament, a great team that fought down to the very last second. A credit to their school and girls basketball in Iowa, New Sharon, coached by Ed Chris, the 1953 number two team. And what a team, New Sharon. And now the champions, true champions throughout every moment of tournament play. One of the young teams to win a state championship in Iowa, coached by L.E. Daly, Jr., the champs from Garnavillo. And now the 1953 champions receive their awards and giant trophy from last year's champions, the All-State Twins, Francis and Francine Billerbeck from Rhinebeck. So there they are, the 1953 girls state champions, Garnavillo. And so the curtain falls on another epic tournament in the history of girls basketball in Iowa. By all standards, the greatest tournament in the history of the game in the Hawkeye State. A tournament that saw thrills and cheers and excitement and yes, some tears. A tournament that will be remembered by all who witnessed it. Yes, the 1953 state tournament is now history.